So here we are. My name is Ed Frawley, and we're going to do another Q&A that comes into our Ask Cindy portal on Learbird.com. And these are always good. Some people might think they're kind of stupid, but as far as I'm concerned, there is no stupid question in dog training. I mean, it's a progression, and something that may seem common sense to one person is not common to another. And today we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about a dog that's a six-month-old German Shepherd that's pretty reactive. So first, I'll read the question, and then we'll talk about how we would handle the dog a little differently. And I think it could help the person. It says, "Dear Cindy, I need a bit of encouragement here on my six-month-old German Shepherd. For your information." He's our fifth German Shepherd, so we're not new to the breed. He is very leash reactive, more so than any of our other German Shepherds in the past. I do have your DVD with Tyler Muto titled Leash Reactivity. I take him to dog parks, pet stores, and walks in our neighborhood, etc. He seems more fixated in our neighborhood environment. He's not mean at all. He would just sniff another dog if given the chance and play bow. Also, he would lick other people to death if he had a chance. It's a little embarrassing. Still, the leash pulling and barking seems extreme. I keep him at, I keep him at a distance and try to give him his space, hoping it will improve over time and go away. I'm trying my best to avoid using an electric collar for the dog's behavior. He's getting big and not as cute as he was when he was a little puppy. I don't mean to alarm people that we will eventually meet on our walks. Am I on the right track? So this is really a good question. And it is one of the most common questions, leash reactivity, that we get from people that write in and ask questions to the Ask Cindy. And, and the reason is that people try and do the right thing with their dog. They try and get them out and introduce them. You know, there's this so-called get your dog out and socialize it, and socialize it means take your dog and introduce them to new people and new places and blah, blah, blah. And really, that's not the way we socialize dogs. It's not the best way to socialize dogs. If you want to read how we socialize dogs, we'll put the URL on our website uh, for the articles we have and how we approach it. But basically, what we do and what we would recommend this person do is to stop doing what they're doing, back off, and look for places that they can take their dog where the dog can feel comfortable, where there's not a lot of distractions that are going to cause this reactivity to come out. The more you do that, in addition to working with the training that you're going to do, and we use reward-based training and food rewards and a whole subject for another video or many other videos, the more you do that, the more the dog is going to be comfortable going to places. So we're saying, don't go to dog parks. Uh, don't go to places where there are a lot of people walking. Find places that are a little more remote, where you have more time, or go at different uh, hours to walk your dog when there are less people around. So the dog doesn't have to feel like he's concerned of the things that he sees. So we've had, we've had dogs before that we had to stay a good football field away from another dog or a good football field away from strange people. And then we would do our work. And then as the dog matured, as he got older, and as he went through the training with us, the distance from a football field will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And we don't allow our dogs to interact with other dogs. We never do that. There's not a need for that. That's an old wives tale that your dog needs to play with other dogs. I'll give you the caveat here to that because there are no rules in dog training. And that is, let's say you have another friend that has a dog and the dog is not reactive. You can go on, you can try going on walks with both dogs on leash for a long time. 
so the two of them get used to being together. And that's a good way to start this process. But the key with this six month old dog is the owner should stop doing what he's doing because it's not gonna get better on its own. In fact, the odds are if he's doing or if she's doing what she's doing, it's only gonna get worse. The reason for that is the more you allow a puppy or a young dog to rehearse bad behavior, the stronger that behavior gets and the harder it's gonna to be to stop and break that behavior. So what you should be doing is using food, high value food, which you have with you all the time, keep a bait pouch or a bag of high value food, not kibble, uh, with you all the time and keep your dog focused on you. You become the center of that dog's universe. Don't allow your dog to be focused over here. Redirect the dog. If you even see the dog looking from 100 yards away at something that's going on over there, redirect the dog on, on yourself. Tap him on the butt, say, hey, Fido, look at this. Sit or come or, or whatever, but feed him. And you can feed him more than once. You can turn it in, as Michael Ellis says, you can turn it into a party multiple rewards to keep them focused and then turn and move and go in another direction. So redirect the dog away from something that he's focused on, get him focused on you with food rewards and turn and move away. And then as you move away, you know, feed him, give him rewards for staying focused on you. Your goal needs to be to get your dog focused on you and not things in the environment that may upset him. So we train for a long time in locations where we can control the distractions. We won't take them to a park where there's a lot of people walking their dogs. We won't take them to any environment where there's a lot of distractions that can cause the dog to get a little bit nervous. So we think that you're getting ahead of yourself. You're trying to do too much too soon with your dog. You have to have patience and let him grow up. And then you have to kind of mold the kind of behavior that you want with your dog. You don't want to take them to a park where there's a lot of people, where there's a lot of kids running around. You don't want to take them near, much less in a dog park ever. They're a bad idea. If you want to read an article on it, we have them on our website, how dog parks are the worst ideas you can have. Uh, but pick places that are quieter, where you can kind of predict how busy it's gonna be. You can kind of predict the kind of people that you're gonna pass. Like here we have very good walking trails. We're in an industrial park in our town. And the people that are out there are out for exercise. They're not gonna stop and try and pet your dog. They're not gonna walk with other dogs. So we're the only one with dogs around. Take your time and then when you do this, work on your engagement with your dog. We have very good videos on how to, how to build engagement with the dog. We've got an excellent one that we did with Forrest Mickey. We have uh, videos on engagement with Michael Ellis. If you're not familiar with working with food rewards, we have uh, material on the power of training dogs with food. If you're not familiar with uh, marker training, reward-based training, we have uh, a good video that I did a number of years ago, the power of training dogs with markers. So. Going right back to the core of this is isolate yourself, work on engagement, become the focus of your dog's attention. Don't worry about other people and other dogs. We don't let other people come up and pet our dogs. That just doesn't happen. And then for those people that are just watching these uh, question and answers uh, that we read, if you have questions, go to Learberg.com, scroll down to the Ask Cindy, and you don't need to be a customer. You do need to put your email address in there, not because we're gonna spam you, we don't do that. We never sell email addresses. The reason we have emails is so that if you come back at a future date, Cindy can pull up the past questions that you have asked on your dog. She can refer to your questions and her answers and give you better information going forward.